Hey team, welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Klani and I'm a second year medical student in Canada. Today, what we're going to be talking about is the new Ryerson Medical School. I want to share with you what updates and what information we have available to us right now, as well as what my thoughts are on this news. So I just want to share with you first the Ryerson article that they put out announcing that they've received a planning grant for their medical school in Brampton. And what does that even mean? That's what I first want to go over with you guys, because I think there's a lot of hype associated with this medical school that maybe needs to be put behind a little bit of caution. So going down into what they're actually saying in this article is essentially that Ryerson is receiving this grant to help them plan the medical school. It doesn't guarantee that they'll actually receive funding from the Ontario government. They still have to submit this plan through and get that approved. And then basically the government will see where it goes from there. And they've given us a nice little press release saying that Ryerson University is embarking on a new chapter that will help shape the future of healthcare in Ontario. On Wednesday, the government of Ontario announced a planning grant that will support Ryerson in developing a proposal for a medical school in Brampton. So there's what I'm saying. It's a planning grant that's going to support them in writing this proposal. So we're still a ways away from a medical school in Brampton. And the proposal will detail Ryerson's approach to healthcare with a focus on primary care, expanded use of technology to better meet patient needs, interprofessional practice, and the provision of culturally competent care. So all of these things are focuses that they want the medical school to have. And quite honestly, they are becoming the standard for Canadian medical schools. Going through them one by one, they want to focus on primary care. That means your family doctor's office, as opposed to your tertiary care, which would be like a hospital. They want to expand their use of technology to better meet patient needs. That's definitely a growing topic in Canada with the proliferation of more and more electronic medical records. And it's a nice thing that their medical school wants to have a focus on that. Next, they're talking to us about a focus on interprofessional practice, which again, many medical schools are focusing on this. I think what they have as an advantage at their school is that they have a few other colleges in Brampton who have agreed to work with them on this project. And those colleges have all sorts of other healthcare professions, which will make this process of promoting interprofessional practice a lot easier. And if you're not familiar with what interprofessional practice means, it essentially means better integrating the different members of the healthcare team. And lastly, the provision of culturally competent care. That's quite an important thing, especially for cities in Canada that are quite diverse. And Brampton is one of those cities with a high proportion of their population not being born in Canada. And the reason why culturally competent care is said to be important is because that allows healthcare professionals to better meet the needs and the understandings of their patients. And that should theoretically mean care that patients are more happy to receive and more likely to continue using. And the second portion of this statement is a quote from the president and chancellor of Ryerson saying that they're optimistic that Ryerson can offer a new approach to medical education in Ontario and uh, essentially saying that Ryerson is in a good place to meet that with a good number of partnerships that I alluded to a bit earlier. Moving into the next portion of this, we're looking at a little bit of the values that they're saying Ryerson's medical school will be designed around. And again, focusing on community-centric primary care and the social determinants of health. We talked about that a bit earlier. Primary care and social determinants of health have definitely received a lot more attention in the healthcare community. So it's good to hear that they're having a greater focus on that. They're also looking to provide culturally competent care, like we've mentioned. They're leveraging innovation and technology and practices to improve quality of care and patient outcomes, providing physicians with the skills to develop interprofessional networks of healthcare to achieve better outcomes for patients, and then focusing on the aging and supporting seniors as a growing portion of society gets older. These are all really important things, and it's nice that they've included them here, but I'm not really sure how much this distinguishes their medical school from others, as other medical schools are really starting to focus on these key pillars. I also want to talk about this internationally trained medical doctors program in Brampton. This is a separate thing from their medical school, but I think if they're able to do this in Brampton, it shows you the capability to start a medical school there as well. And then it also means that some healthcare practitioners in the area are already involved with education. So I think this is a really great indication that a medical program in Brampton is actionable. And I also just wanted to include this statement from the mayor of Brampton, 
who's talking about how he's pushing for more and more educational initiatives in the city. And one of them is this ITMD program. And another that they've been pushing for is a Ryerson campus in Brampton. And then lastly, they've tried to push for this medical school as well. And then I also just included this statement about the composition of Brampton being a city with a high proportion of people from outside of Canada who've immigrated. And that raises the importance of why they've put such an emphasis on culturally competent care. And having a medical school in Brampton, I think at least, could be a really great opportunity to see how we can best engage teaching healthcare practitioners to engage in culturally competent care. So I think this program has a lot of potential, but I wanna talk about why I think there could be some political barriers to getting this done. As you may or may not be aware, Brampton has been trying for a while now to try and get a full university from Ryerson in their city. And they faced some challenges along the way and haven't been successful yet. So Brampton was actually slated to get a satellite campus for Ryerson and that was proposed by the Liberal government of Ontario. And then immediately after the election, when the progressive conservative government took over, they cut that initiative completely. And then today we have Doug Ford's progressive conservative government making this proposal to build a medical school in Brampton. And this is just before the 2022 election, which is in June. And you might be asking, why am I bringing this up? And the reason is that we've seen in the past that educational initiatives have been used in these provincial elections as essentially pawns to get more votes. So after the election, there isn't necessarily a strong pull to actually follow through with these initiatives. So my concern is that because the medical school doesn't have a solid confirmation that it's good to be built yet, that this is still up in the air and that by the next election, things could change, tides will turn, and the new government decides to cut this initiative again, leaving Brampton again empty-handed. So really, this is going to depend on how much follow-through the government is willing to put into this. And again, the election is on June 2nd, 2022, which is just over a year away, so we'll have to see how things shift in the meantime. And Canada has a total of 19 medical schools and they're all just listed here for you if you wanna look at them. And the newest of which is the North Ontario School of Medicine, which actually only has around 60 or so spots for medical students. And you might be wondering as someone pursuing a medical career, what the implications are for you if this medical school does go through. So I've went ahead and pulled some stats from the AFMC from 2019. And in 2019, there were around 14,000 applicants in the 2018-2019 cycle and around 3,000 students received offers of admission. And that gives us around a 19.5% success rate for applications. Now, if you're young and you're planning on applying to medical school in three or four years time, when I expect this medical school may or may not be around. So I've made some projections for the 2025-2026 cycle. And this is basically just my back of the envelope calculation. And, and here are some of the assumptions that I've used. I've assumed that there'll be around 700 new applicants per year, which is more or less typical of what we've seen in the past. I've assumed that there's going to be no changes to the number of offers by existing medical schools, which isn't necessarily going to be the case. There's probably going to be some fluctuations there, but that's hard for me to predict. And then I've also assumed that this new medical school is going to have a total capacity of 100 seats and they'll send around 150 offers out. And I think that's reasonable, especially if this is a medium-sized medical school and they're going to start small in their first year. So if we make those assumptions, this is what we get. We get around 19,500 applicants in that cycle we get 3,000 applicants receiving offers of admission and we'll have a success rate of around 15.5%. So that's a drop in the success rate, which is kind of expected regardless of whether or not this medical school exists as more and more people apply to medical school. So with that said, what are the implications for you? Potentially as someone who's applying to medical school going forward in the future, the addition of around 100 or so seats, it's almost a drop in the bucket considering all of the other variables in this success rate. In terms of how this affects residency positions, I actually don't see it as a major concern. So with this new medical school, if we assume that it's built in, let's say 2025, and they take their first set of medical students in 2026, 
and then it's a four year program, then those students will only be graduating by 2030. By 2030, a lot of things could change for match rates for medical students. It's a good period of time. And looking at the past, we've seen with the government health expenditure that it tends to increase over time. With nine years until 2030, that's a lot of time to build new healthcare facilities, which should hopefully open up more residency positions. And I don't anticipate that adding a new medical school to Brampton will be a huge issue. So overall, I'm optimistic that the Brampton Medical School could be built in the next few years. I do anticipate that there may be some political barriers to get over in getting the funding for the medical school. And in terms of what's important for students who are applying to medical school, I feel like this will give you another medical school to apply to that will maybe perceive your application slightly differently and might give you additional chances, especially for applicants coming out of Ontario. With that said, I'm eager to hear what your thoughts and opinions are on the Brampton Medical School. Do you think it's going to go ahead? Let me know in the comments. If you've made it to the end, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.